<laughs> okay, guys, I get it. I will teach you the way. Yo, what is up, guys? Russ here, coming at you with another video. So I heard you down below in the comment sections. I do read all my comments, and I have been getting this one a lot. Um, in my previous video, the Mythic Plus Assassination Rogue uh, Guide, um, if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link to it up in the, the top right hand corner. So make sure that you uh, check that one out if it's of interest to you. Um, but yeah, I have been getting a lot of comments um, of people asking me for my UI, my LVUI nameplates, if I use Plater, this and that. I use LVUI filters. Okay, so that's that LVUI filters. Um, they've been asking me how I get my nameplates to change color um, to purple, to pink, to things like that when my ruptures are running off. Um, so I'm just going to decided, I just decided I'm going to make a video and explain how I do that, show you how to do it for yourself. Um, and it is not strictly limited to rows. It's not stri strictly limited to ruptures or anything like that or dots or anything. Honestly, you can essentially turn your entire enemy nameplate into a big weak aura, which will allow you to much more easily see when things are happening. Um, which may be at least what I use it for. Um, things that I think will be very, very detrimental to your rotation and completely scuff your DPS if you do get them wrong or let them run out and things like that. So hopefully I'll explain clearly and in a short, concise way how to set that up all up for yourselves. Um, and uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll just quickly shout out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash just for us. Um, live most days. Come hang out with us over there. I'll answer any questions up there or down below in the comment section here on YouTube. But yeah, feel free to uh, come hang out. And um, without further ado, I'll get into the video. So here we are in the game now, guys. And uh, basically, I'm just going to show you how to set these up from scratch. Because um, originally, I was going to make a dummy profile to play around with these in LVI. But in the process, I appear to have deleted my own filters. So what better way to show you how to set them up than to actually make my new filters right here, right now in this video for you guys, with you guys. Um, basically, you're just going to open up LVY. Um, as far as I know, this is an LVY thing. Um, if you can get similar functiona functionality with Plater, then do leave me a comment down below and I'll look into it. Maybe I'll make a Plater version of this video as well. Um, but yeah, you're going to open up your menu, go to LVY, and then you want to be looking for nameplates. And inside nameplates, you will be going to style filter. But before we do that, I'm just going to make sure that you uh, this doesn't just so this doesn't mess uh, up later in the video. You want to go to enemy NPC real quick and on debuffs, you want to increase the number of displayed auras um, and like reduce your icon size. Basically, that's going to be these icons over here that are fitting um, above the nameplates of the target. If the icon isn't visible to LVY, then it won't apply the filters to the nameplate. Um, so you would need to make sure that these uh, these icons are showing so you can, you know, whichever way you like to do that with um, icon size and displayed auras, but try and have a maximum number of auras displayed to increase the likelihood that this is actually going to apply the filter to the whole nameplate. So play around with these two options. I just put my icon size down a bit and increase the number of displayed auras to max, which is eight. Uh, and then we're going to go back to style filter. And basically now um, it's just base is going to turn your whole nameplate into essentially like a big weak aura is what, what the goal is here is to make it very very visually eye-catching i'm going to do it in this example by colors um to show you that you can change like the whole nameplate's color just so that it very very easily catches your eye you don't have to be looking above the nameplate for these small like rupture icons with the amount of seconds left and things like that um it's just gonna um show you oh my rupture's gone i really need to rupture this target right so this is all going to be done in kind of like assassination roguey thing just because i think it's a good example to do it by um, but it is apply it's applicable you know you can apply this to anything um warlock dots like anything dot related anything debuff related anything that you think is like very very detrimental to your rotation if you skip it or miss it or something so you could do it for example with um mark for death with outlaw or something um you could make the nameplate go like bright pink on the target that you've put your mark for death on so that you know that, oh, that's the target. Once that one dies, I can mark for death a different target. Then maybe it's going to help you increase, you know, um, how many sniping mark for deaths you get per dungeon, right? Because you can focus down the pink target to make sure that it's going to reset your mark for death so you can use it again and stuff like that. Um, so basically, um, we're going to go into these triggers uh, and I'm going to just choose my talents as, sorry, my class as a rogue and assassination. 
if you want this set of um, visual effects to work for subtlety as well with ruptures on subtlety then obviously click this box i'm just going to keep it as assassination for now um, but do feel free to play around with any of these there's so much you can do with this uh, but i think it's a really cool thing that not too many people know about if you ever played with um oh i'm actually on the wrong filter um so i'll just take that one off real quick so if you ever noticed that explosives um uh, if you're using lvi and it's explosive week you might notice that explosives have like a different color nameplate it's using these same filters to make that nameplate go uh what's it doing it's going like a light blue or something um, so we're going to pretty much use the exact same principle, but we're going to apply it to our dots as a rogue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new filter and I'm just going to call it rupture, rupture down. This one is going to be for when I don't have a rupture on a target, right? So it's only going to show when I do not have rupture up and going on a target. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to enable triggers. I'm going to go to class rogue assassination. As I said, if you want us to go for subtlety too, click this box. I'm going to go down to debuffs and then I'm going to put missing because I, I want this one to track when I have rupture missing, rupture down. Uh, and then I'm going to type in this box rupture. That's just going to add rupture to what it's tracking down here. Um, I can leave the minimum maximum time off for now because we just want it to do when it's missing. Um, and then pretty much that's done. It's just going to track our rupture whenever it's missing. It's going to apply x set of uh you know visual effects so now we're going to go to actions it's going to be the actual thing that's going to change about the nameplate when uh, the constraints are met that being a rupture being down right so you can you can do whatever you really like here whatever you like the look of you could set the scale to targets that don't have ruptures to go smaller or the scale to go bigger for example let's just put it bigger for this example uh, and then we're going to change the color of the health um so these are like the normal color uh, of, of what the nameplates would be if we're in combat with them. That being yellow because they're neutral mobs. Uh, we can set the health color to, I don't know, let's use a dark blue. Um, so that's very, very eye-catching. You know, if, if we're in combat and everything's good, they should be yellow, right? They should be this color. And then when our rupture is down, they're going to go boom, and they're going to plink to like a very, very dark blue. Very, very easy to see. Oh, there's no rupture on this target. I need to think about putting a rupture up because, you know, then I'm getting more energy regen. Um, so what I'm going to do is not only let, let it be dark blue, but I'm also going to put a white border around it. So that's like very, very eye catching. If, uh, if, if everything's good, it's going to look like this. And then if our rupture's down, it's going to look like this, right? So like very, very easy to see. Uh, and I'm going to close this one out. So if I now apply a rupture to this dummy, to this dummy, uh, what should happen is, uh, when the rupture is up, it will go yellow because that means everything's, uh, good and good to go and a-okay. Okay. So there we go, it is now. And then as this rupture runs out, it should plink back to a dark blue with a border like these two here. So it's a bit easier to see when it's running out because boom, like the whole nameplate changes. So as you can see, like if I get a few uh, ruptures up, it's going to be very, very easy to see uh, when they're, when they've run out, right? Um, if I'm just doing my normal rotation, strike up a slice and dice and whatnot. And then as soon as the rupture runs out, um, I'm going to be like, oh, this one needs a new rupture because it's turned blue, right? Oh, now this one needs a new rupture because it's turned blue, right? Um, oh, now now this one up here is uh, needing a new rupture. So for examples like that, it's very it's already very, very much easier to see than just like looking at these icons and being like, oh, I don't see a rupture on this target. So I need to, or like tabbing through them to check your weak auras or something to see like how your ruptures are doing, right? So it's very, very eye-catching in that sense. Now we can go one step further. And uh, what I like to do is create like a kind of warning rupture is running out soon uh and then have rupture is down so right now we've just made the rupture is down and i'll show you how to make these like rupture is running out soon i like to do it by what i call a kind of like traffic light system i've set up the uh, constraints um already here so i've got one which uh rupture is less than six seconds i'm going to make this one a light blue and i've got one rupture is less than four seconds i'm going to set this one to a bit of a dark blue and then a rupture is less than two seconds, being a very dark blue. So basically what this is going to do all together is that um, as rupture gets to six seconds, it's going to go blue. And then it's going to slowly over every two seconds get a bit darker and a bit darker until it gets down to zero, which will be this very dark blue with the white border. So it should create kind of like this subliminal messaging in your mind that you need to refresh a rupture very, very soon. And the darker the nameplate, the more in need of being re-ruptured it is, right? And then it having a white border being when it absolutely has no rupture in it. And that's like the highest priority, right? So there's one extra thing that you need to do when you do all this. 
you will need to create filters, um, name them whatever you will um, to help you identify them when you're editing them and things. Um, but you basically want to go through again, um, set your class up, etc, etc, set your debuffs up, etc, etc, but don't click missing this time. Um, and then in the box here, you want to be uh, putting your maximum time. So this one is the rupture less than two. So I want the maximum time to be two. Um, this one over here is rupture less than four, so maximum time four. Make sure you click enter in this box, by the way, after you type in the number or it will not save your settings. And then here I have the rupture less than six seconds. And uh, this one is showing six. So these are all the same. Make sure you uh, add rupture each time. Um, I don't think there is a way to duplicate these like there are with weak cores. So you have to set these up again from scratch every single, not every single time you log in, but like uh, every single time you make a new filter, you're going to have to like go back through this whole like choosing assassination and making sure rupture is the one being buffed. And then you're just typing a different number in this box each time. And then there's one extra thing you need to do, which is these filter priorities. Basically, the higher the priority, um, it's going to override all of the other filters that are applied to that nameplate for that certain debuff. So I want my highest priority to obviously be rupture being down. That, that means it's like in the biggest need. So I've set this one to filter priority one. Um, the next highest is obviously going to be when it's low, when it's two seconds or less. So I put this one to two. Um, then four seconds or less, put this one to three. And then at six seconds or less, I put this one to four. Right. So that's just like the priority one, two, three, four. Um, play around with these until you get it working how you want. It did take me a couple of attempts um, to kind of like relearn how I did these when I first set them up. Um, but yeah, now what should happen is as I do a rupture on this target, let me just put up like a quick uh, two combo points so that we can see it very clearly. Um, if I put up a two combo point, everything's good because it's at 10 seconds. As it gets to six, it should go very light blue um, here. And then as it gets to four, a bit darker. And then two, a bit darker again. And then as Rupture runs off, it goes very dark with a with a white border. So now we can kind of like, if we were doing our rotation, um, I can uh, put up like different lengths of Ruptures. So the darker blue the nameplate is going to be, the more in need of being Ruptured that is. Right, so this one started going blue a bit before, so we know it's going to run out first. Then this one went blue, so we're going to put this one up. And then this one is just like, had its Rupture run off. We're going to do this and then we can go back to doing our rotation. How are we going? Put some slice and dices. Um, obviously, I would go right here, but I'm not doing it because I'm going to show you another thing I'm doing with filters in a second. Um, but this one's turning blue first. So obviously, we need to think about rupturing this one. Then this one's turning blue. This so we're going to rupture this one. And then this one's turning blue and it's getting darker and darker. We haven't lost our rupture until it goes with a white border. So now we didn't actually lose any downtime on our ruptures. And we didn't have to look at these icons and kind of like track them all separately and things like that. So that's what you can do. That's just ruptures, right? So now you can compile this on top of garotes, for example, but we could use a different kind of like visual reminder that garotes up or down or whatnot. Um, so we can have colors for ruptures and now we can uh, have textures for garotes. So if I go back into LVI now, uh, I've made one or actually I didn't make one. Um, I'll make one quickly here. Just call it garot. Um, present, right? So this will apply. Obviously, I want to make this one applying when there is a garrote on the target. So I'm going to go down, down to debuffs again. I'm going to instead put garrote in here. Um, we don't need a certain minimum time or maximum time because you just want to have like, garrotes out on as many targets as you want, for example. So I don't need to click missing here. It's tracking garrotes. Um, let's put it back to assassination rogues. And then the actions here. Um, if I change the texture down here, um, let's just use, um, so we're going to go with world state something or other down the bottom, SCO, world state SCO. And uh, basically what we're going to be able to see is now if I run over here and start rupturing things, um, you'll see it goes yellow like usual. Um, but then if I now put a uh, garrote up on it, it's going to change to a different texture, but we still get our colors signaling our ruptures. And then uh, we're also going to now get our textures signaling our garrotes. So I can kind of start to put up all my ruptures now. And then uh, I can see now the flick of, you know, with in the corner of my eye that these two are already garroted. So I probably want to put a garrote up on this one. Uh, and then from then on, I'm just, you know, doing my usual rotation. This one needs a new uh, rupture suit. I can see this one doesn't have a garrote on it. And now I can see that the next one that doesn't have a garrote uh, is this one over here. My mouse is over. 
going to redo my rupture here, put my garou on here, and then I'm going to look to rupture this one. So basically, um, it will just turn your entire nameplate experience into something that is a bit more passive and you have to worry about less since you've got so many other things going on anyway. Um, just make your life a bit easier. So you can start kind of like compiling this to just like subliminally message um, your brain of like all the different things that you kind of like want to be tracking. It might be helpful for some of you. It might not help you at all. Um, just a cool little thing that I think that is uh, kind of underrated in LVY and is honestly the reason I use LVY um, because I I tried so many different nameplate things to track like putting different... This was like back when Plato was in its early stages of development. Um, I wanted to try and get this going for like agonies on a warlock. So it's very, very bad if your agonies drop off as a warlock. Um, because they have to restack back up. So I wanted to make this like orange, like very, very light orange when it's running out soon. And then it gets darker and darker and darker towards when it's about to run out. So I could very, very easily see um, on multiple targets where my agonies were dropping off soon because I really, really, really didn't want to have to like wait for that to stack back up. It was a big DPS loss. So um, yeah, I kind of like couldn't find any other add-on that could do this kind of functionality in it. Um, like changing the whole nameplate color because I don't really like looking for these tiny icons with like a second ticking while I'm trying to look at my feet, while I'm trying to like think about interrupting, while I'm trying to do all this. Um, look at the timers for mechanics coming in. Like there's so many different things that I've co I'm concentrating on anyway that just like a big color changing on my screen is like, oh, okay, I need to do that right now. Or like I need to think about doing that soon if you make the traffic light system that um, I was talking about. Um, so yeah, like a really cool thing is just to kind of like play around with these filters. Um, not too many people know about them, as I said. Loads of people have been asking me questions about them. But um, yeah, give it a go. See what you think. Um, let me know if it helped you out. Um, let me know if it didn't. And um, yeah, give me some give me some ideas of like what you'd like me to make next. As always, if you did enjoy this kind of video, then um, give it a like so that I know that you know to make more of this. Um, subscribe if you're new. And um, yeah, hopefully come check out the Twitch. Um, I stream, as I said, there like uh, five days a week. Um, but yeah, we do loads of different stuff. Shadowlands, not Shadowlands, you know, gaming, chatting, all this kind of good stuff. Um, just hanging out, shooting the shit generally. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if that sounds to your liking, then do feel free to go follow the Twitch. I'll leave it down below and uh, on the screen now. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys, I hope you have a great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And... Um, yeah, thank you for watching and until next time, peace.